बहुत धन्यवाद सर और हमने आपसे बहुत कुछ सीखा है और आगे भी जे में जब तक हम रहेंगे जरूर सीखने का मौका मिलता रहेगा और हम कोशिश करेंगे कि सर को बस जस्ट फॉर यूर इन्फॉर्मेशन मैं आपको बताना चाहूँगा हमने अब तक लगभग साठ के आसपास संगोष्ठी आयोजित की है और जिसके तहत लगभग सात आठ आठ किताबें लगभग हमारी तैयार हुई है इससे और इस संगोष्ठी से भी कोई ना कोई किताब निकल के आएगी इन बातों के साथ आपको बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया और इसके बाद मैं बुलाना चाहूँगा बहुत ही आदर के साथ आई सर के मेंबर सेक्रेटरी प्रोफेसर वीरेंद्र कुमार मल्होत्रा जी को वीरेंद्र कुमार मल्होत्रा जी बेसिकली इकोनॉमिक्स के हैं और सर का बायोडाटा मेरे पास है बहुत काम है इनका बेसिकली मेरठ सी सी एस यूनिवर्सिटी मेरठ से मेरठ में प्रोफेसर रह चुके हैं कई एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन पोस्ट पर भी रह चुके हैं तो सर से थैंक यू डॉक्टर जहीद अब्दुल दीवान एंड माय फ्रेंड एंड वेरी डिस्टिंग्विस्ट मेंबर ऑफ आवर काउंसिल आल्सो प्रोफेसर अश्विनी महापात्रा एंड वी हैव we were listening to professor rijwan rahman also there are few things when we talk about research methods in humanities and social science emerging trends and in in context i think there are few things that we should be definitely talking about uh, there are two components of this important theme and as professor rijwan has already rahman has already highlighted that what for seminars should be conducted and what should be the outcome of these seminars uh, he has made his point that publication should be a natural outcome of such seminars at icssr also we are making all possible efforts in that whether we talk of seminars or we talk of conferences or we talk of uh fellowships or projects or even grants which relate to uh attending seminar or conferences abroad or going abroad for data collection kind of exercises also we make it a point that all those who derive some benefit of these schemes of ours in fact they must contribute towards creation of knowledge and they they must be prepared for that before they talk in terms of dissemination they must themselves be ready to be part of the creation of very knowledge in fact through their publication uh, let me compliment the organizers on this occasion that they have taken a very important theme for today's or for this two day seminar in fact Uh, research methods in humanities and social sciences emerging trend and indian context uh, so publication is one part of it uh, for last 2 3 years or maybe 4 5 years in the world wherever we have gone or wherever we have a collaboration or the kind of papers which are coming if we pay a little attention to those we'll try to find out one thing that is the entire world is talking about two basic ideas one is whatever research we are doing has to be impactful and secondly whatever we are spending in terms of money or in terms of time has to be converted into an investment when we when we talk of these two things the the world has definitely deliberated on what constitutes being impactful also earlier we used to think that mere publication emerging out of some research constitutes 
the impact. In social science and humanities domain, now what is thinking? That we have to go beyond mere publication also. Publication is a very strong component and that has to be respected. But apart from that, in social science and humanities domain, because when we say publication, we are talking about a knowledge that has been created and it must definitely reach all possible corners of those who can be potential recipients or beneficiaries of that knowledge. So interesting aspect would be that through that knowledge creation, are we talking about or do we intend to really talk about and solve some social problem, some social issue? It has been found in analysis of Scopus publications itself and if you could talk in terms of any kind of citation indices in fact, it has been found the researches which have been oriented towards discussing social problems and discussing social, the solutions of those social problems also, they have been most cited researches in the world. The point is, creation of knowledge for the pleasure of oneself or creation of knowledge for the benefit of the society at large. And when society benefits at large from the new creations of knowledge, this is, this is when it starts responding to taking interest in and investing their, their time and resources in those kind of researches. That, that being an important aspect. Let me put here very straight, if you have a look at Scopus statistics or Web of Science statistics, you would notice that India's rank in science domain has been one among the top four to five countries in the world for last 10 to 15 years. Whereas in social science domain, our rank has been from 10 to 15 in the corresponding period of time. I have this pleasure this morning to discuss and you become the first place because I was going through Scopus statistics yesterday itself and we found out in 2013 in social science domain, India had 8,316 publications. In 2015, we were standing at 10,829. And 2019, our number stands at 22,550, which is a rise by more than 100% over last three to four years. I think this is this is the kind of task uh, Professor Ashwini would agree with me that we have shared our common concerns. Talked about enhancing the productivity of social science and humanities research in the country. And this is what we wanted to prove in fact and make a point. And this point has very rightly been raised by Professor Rizwanur Rahman also. So it would be very, very pertinent because if you could see this graph from this place, you could see this kind of rise which is happening in India's statistics, especially in the domain of social science and humanities. So we have to keep this uh, momentum up in fact and continuing us. As I said, if we talk of impactful researchers, so publication is an important area, but where should we be publishing? Where should we be concentrating? Should we be talking about the same problems that we have been talking about for last 40, 50 years? Or should we be talking about the contemporary issues and trying to find solutions to the existing problems? The, the very idea is that that we should be talking about the problems that have been disturbing the society. 
the problems that have built certain kind of narratives which are not good and in the interest of the society. Society has to be treated as one. This nation today, if we talk about India, because you have Indian context also, we, we stand as a one nation. Our problems, most of our problems are common. So how can we think in terms of through researches, finding solutions to those problems? I have felt, why, why this Indian context, and when we talk of Indian context, we have to revisit a little history also. That becomes very, very pertinent in fact. Uh, let me place on record that the kind of researches, because sometimes we suffer from uh, this mindset that perhaps Indians have not been good at research. In my understanding, the answer to this kind of thinking is no. If you have been figuring in or among top four to five in science and technology related researches, and you have a long history, a history which goes up to 4,000 to 5,000 years in fact, and where you have been treated as perhaps for a very long period of time, we were considered as teachers and the top order researchers in the world. We, we need to understand why is it so that in Scopus statistics, we are among top four to five in science and technology and in social science domain, we continue to be in the ranks from 10 to 15 for a very long period of time. The answer is that perhaps we were not trying to orient our social science and humanities researches towards solving the problems of the society. And most of our researches were definitely taking shape, which were not too citable in the international statistics or in the international researches. Experimental research in India has been virtually at the core. Uh, in 18th century, it is said to have been initiated by Claude Bernard. But when you look at your own history, you'll find that its glimpses were present in India even in 1500 BC. Those of us who have studied Atharva Veda, which is the source of Indian medical science, they'll come to know about it, what kind of experimental researches were done. In the same sequence, I would like to name Charaka also, who laid emphasis again on experimental research in his Susurta Samhita in 1000 BC, and then Astang Samagraha in 680, we find that a lot of emphasis was put on researches and especially experimental researches. Kautilya's Arthashastra 320 BC also makes a mention about a society which should be thriving on researches. Something that must compel us, because somebody said, and people keep saying it at different uh, phases, in fact, that Indian seers and sages, they were also, to some extent, scientists. And I, I read some record, I went through that, and I was amazed to see the kind of commentaries that people have written on that. They say, Indian sages and seers, they were made to go to forests for a very long period of their life. They were made to talk to goat herds, shepherds, cow herds, ascetics, with regard to medicine, especially herbs. 
that they used to gather through plants, experiment on animals and then try, used to see the results of that. And they even found that toxic and anti-toxic drugs, they grow together. It was a phenomenal finding itself and it, it finds its traces even in the modern medical researches. I used to think, why is it so that in India, plants and animals, including small animals, are worshipped? The answer is that because we have, for the purpose of our experiment, we have definitely conducted our experiments on that and they have contributed towards creation of that kind of knowledge. And this is why we developed a sense of gratitude towards not only flora, but also towards all animals, including very small animals. They, they, they even go to the extent of right, and all these things find its place in a thorough way. Even birds know plants, and that is why the world has been studying birds for a very long period of time. Let me, let me also talk a little about Panini's Astathyay, which forms the basis of Sanskrit and Sanskrit grammar till date is considered to be most perfect in the world. Panini at, at his times may not have ever thought that the, this world will be very largely at some stage computer based. After 1000 or 2000 or 2500 years, the world will be largely based on computers machine learning and artificial intelligence. The world would need a language that is most perfect so far as its grammar is concerned. And I was stunned to notice that Sanskrit grammar which Panini wrote is based on 4,000 aphorisms and entire language is encrypted in these aphorisms. I asked some philosopher, the known philosopher of the country on a day, that what are the research methods that we have been following in the past, uh, historically and maybe civilizationally. And he made a mention about two things. One is Mimansa, and two is Tantra Yuktis. I had some idea of Mimansa, which means analysis. Analyzing man, matter, and all, all possibilities, in fact, that could exist. I inquired about Tantra Yuktis, and he said, that Tantra means Sastra, that is having an exchange of viewpoints, saying your viewpoint and listening to others also what they have to say about that, or even to contest that. And Yukti unites the sentential meaning as it promotes and promulgates knowledge. What I'm trying to say is that, and I know a lot of research in NASA, in Germany, in US, and even in Europe is being conducted on that they would need in future a language which is 100% compatible with computers, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Which language it could be would be a moot question before that and they are thinking about the possibilities of having Sanskrit as that language. So I wanted to put all this in Indian context, that we are a society which has 
a very glorious past which was based on research, which has more than two to three thousand or four thousand years of history. And of course, our sages and seers and researchers at that point of time may have done the kind of researches that they were they were supposed to do during those periods. We, in our understanding, we have far more developed means now, so we should be doing those kind of researches now. But the tradition of knowledge and the tradition of knowledge creation has been very much present. All Vedas, Rigveda, Yajurveda, Atharveda or Sanveda that we could talk about, they, they talk about different branches of knowledge. And since not many people were not literate at those stages of history, so all Vedas were based on, and they were called as also Shruti, which means learning by listening. And Vedas were created in a manner that their recitation could happen through times. And now people at NASA also are trying to know the, the, the kind of voices that are created by the planetary system. I'm not trying to say whether it resembles with this or that. I'm not going into those aspects. The point is, and I know under Buddhism, there is a strong tradition. I was listening to the Dalai Lama one day, and he was saying that in Buddhism, entire learning is through the process of recitation. And unless it happens to be adoptable by the people and easily recitable, then people cannot understand and they cannot learn. So then you go back to Panini again and studies Astadhyay and you'll find why these aphorisms were created and how Sanskrit was made so simple for our understanding. And then you study. I'm talking about the Indian context right now. I'll come to in three, four minutes, the contemporary issues also. So, whether you talk of Buddhism in India, or you talk of Jainism in India, or you talk of Sikhism given by Nanak in India, you'll notice that we have a strong tradition of not only knowing the things, not only analyzing the things, but also going beyond and asking ourselves this important question. Is this the end of knowledge? Is this the end of scientificism even? And in that light, uh, you know, or we, we must attempt to know the kind of contributions that our ancient researchers have given to this entire world. Many of the steel varieties or versions produced in India still remain uh, a little unexplored or unrecorded in fact as they constitute different type of alloys and alloys are yet to be read very clearly just think i mean because a reference came to economics and statistics and i'll talk about the modern methodologies also in social science of course, methodology in humanities, they slightly differ from the methodology which are applied in social science. Aryabhat's contribution of giving this word zero, India's contribution towards decimal system, numerical notations that we write today, they in India, they have their traces in India which goes up to 500 BC. And Arabs, because they afterwards came to be known as Arab notations, but Arabs adopted it from India, in fact. I remember one of my conversations with Manjul Bhargav, who is a known mathematician of India, uh, there in the United States. And through certain verses 
in Ramayana, Gita. He has talked about the entire matter, but then he can still talk about it. Why I'm talking about all this is that because even in social science, the research methodology has started to depend on mathematical kind of things, uh, uh, let's say uh, mathematical equations and statistical tools also. And this is what lends credibility to those kinds of researchers. The entire binary system was given by Pingala. The whole system of bits and bytes that we talk about in the modern world and on which the entire computer system or artificial intelligence are based, they draw themselves from Pingala's binary system. Chakravala's method of algorithm, who does not know? When we talk of computers, we are talking about, or we talk of programming, we are talking about algorithm. Rules, rulers that we see every day, they were given by Indian mathematicians. Canard gave us the theory of atom mechanics. Plastic surgery has got origin in India. So all these are the things which stand strongly in our background. And if we talk of the modern Indian context, the way the researchers are going, in the beginning itself, I just tried to give you an example of how our statistics is also improving as compared to the international statistics, even in social science domain. The, the basic point is that we were not concentrating on understanding what would have existed in India. I think for a very long period of time and perhaps colonial rule forced us to do something like that, that we started to reject ourselves. And there came Vivekananda who stood out and said, that we must understand ourselves before rejecting ourselves. Self-rejection always leads to depression. Knowing oneself and growing on that solid foundation leads one to attainments, achievements, excellence, and finally glory. And this is where I think India needs to understand itself, its past treasure, is good if I, I could put on record that in the recent past, at least at Indian Council of Social Science Research, we are observing that people's focus or scholars' focus in social science and humanities domain is substantially changing. It is moving towards two kind of impacts that I tried to highlight in the beginning itself. Publication is one aspect. And more than publication, quality publication is the still more important aspect. And then we have to write in those areas which normally address some problem of our society and maybe the entire humanity. To give you an instance, I just like to say that health related studies right now, whether in science domain or in social science domain, are the most cited researchers in the world at this stage. So we, we must understand that researchers must address some practical problem. If they are trying to capture, understand, analyze, and, try to and trying to resolve some of the existing social maladies or problem, they are going to be highly productive and impactful. And not only they will be productive in their own self, in terms of uh, uh, examining their productivity because a lot of time is devoted and a lot of resources are also invested. So this is how we have to view even the social science research. A time has come that without losing ourselves and without wasting our time and resources, we must be concentrating on making social science and humanities research as productive and comparable and as objective as the researchers from India in science and technology domains have been. It's high time 
at least I have no doubts in my mind that when India on a secular path can perform for 15 to 20 or maybe 25 years as good as despite investing a very small proportion of the international researchers even in science and technology domain India can be ranked at four to five places there is a substantial risk with only 0.025% of investment in social science and humanities researches we are among top 10 I have just given you the statistic that how in last three to four years we have doubled our number I think uh, it's it's a, a stage in the history that where from we can take it forward on a very positive note a time has come that we address our real problem and try to come out of the kind of uh, let's say beaten tracks that we have been talking about there is a lot of new to offer in fact and which would have a lot of visibility not only in India but all across the world with these words I would like to stop here itself. I wish organizers a big success in the seminar and I'm very, very hopeful that even if we fail to come out or publish the whole lot of the papers presented here, at least the best papers presented here can be published and we would at ICSRC, how can we be helpful to you in that exercise? Thank you very much.